Uh, good day, all. It's uh, nice to have you with us today. First of all, I'd like to just thank everyone for taking time to participate in the video. Um, for those who are watching, I'm Gary Messing of the Department of Material Science and Engineering at Penn State and Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of Materials Research. Uh, today, we are joined by three early career scholars of the 2019 issue of the Journal of Materials Research. Uh, the reason for our, our video today is to announce the call for papers for the four, fifth Early Career Scholars issue of the Journal of Materials Research. The Early Career, Early Career Scholars issue publishes papers concerned with advanced materials research and covers the entire spectrum of material science today. It, in fact, it covers a lot of the topics that you might see at the Materials Research Society meetings. The Early Career Scholars issue is a unique opportunity to be highlighted and promoted early in one's research career. To increase access to their papers, the issue is published on an open access basis. Uh, this is a great advantage for people who go and look for your paper and find out that it's free to use because of its open access availability. Let me introduce each of our authors uh, who will talk with us a little bit to provide some insights about their experiences with publishing in the Early Career Scholars Institute that's coming out in January in 2019. Um, first, uh, Dr. Hortense Lafron. She is at the School of Material Science and Engineering at Nanyang Technological University. Uh, she publishes a paper on external fields for the fabrication of highly mineralized hierarchical arch architectures. Dr. Jessica Krokstadt who is at the Department of Material Science and Engineering at the University of Illinois Champaign-Urbana. She's published a paper on coupled oxidation resistance and thermal stability in sputter deposited nanogreen alloys. And finally, Dr. Benoit Murrell. He's at the Department of Material Science and Engineering at uh, University of Erlangen, Nuremberg in Germany. He has published a paper on creep behavior of gold thin films investigated by bulge testing at room and elevated temperature. Thank you all for participating today. I really uh, appreciate you taking the time. I know that we're in a lot of different time zones, uh, considering that, uh, Botens, you are in Singapore. Uh, Jessica, you are all the way over in Illinois. And Benoit, you're over in Air, uh, Erlangen, in Germany. So to get us started, uh, I'd like to start off and ask you uh, what your experience is like and what your expectations are for publishing in the Early Career Scholars issue. And I'll start off. Uh, Hortense, uh, why don't you go ahead and start us off with your perspectives on publishing in this issue? Uh, hi, Gary. Um, so for me, having the opportunity to publish a paper in this uh, early career special is uh, is really a great opportunity because I am transitioning from postdoc to independent PI and showing that I have the support, but also that I can contribute to the material research society and the community is, I think, something that very important. And this motivated a lot this uh, review paper that I have um, submitted to this uh, special issue. No, very good, Hotem. Uh, I forgot to add that actually all three of them are fairly new assistant professors at their respective universities. And so when we say early career, we really mean early career in this particular case. Uh, generally, when we define early career, we're referring to people who have not reached the of a senior scientist or a full professor. Um, Jessica, uh, your comments on publishing in the Early Career Scholars issue? Sure. Um, this is an issue that I've been aware of for a few years and was really looking forward to finding the right paper to, to submit to this particular special edition. Um, and so I was very excited, as were my students, they were really excited to get that sort of uh, kind of publicity as well. And even in the, um, the online edition, it's already drawn special attention. So I'm pretty excited um, by the opportunities afforded by this particular uh, edition journal. And Ben, what, uh, what are your thoughts about publishing in this Early Career Scholars issue? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I would actually suggest to any uh, early scholar to, to, to do it as well. So being singled out in this uh, early career issue um, makes a lot of publicity. And this is all the more so valuable as it is organized by, uh, by the MRS organization. 
Uh, well, thank you very much, Ben. I appreciate your kind comments. Uh, I, I would like to just go back and say again that uh, we do a couple of special things with this particular issue. Not only are the papers published open access, uh, but also we do some uh, publicity about the issue so that more people become aware of this, this issue. And then also just to uh, allow for a little increased recognition of our authors, we also have a short bio with their photo at the end of it. So that if you uh, read their paper, which I, we hope you do, you'll also recognize them at the end of the paper so that you, you'll know what they look like when you go to a meeting in the future. Um, let me ask another question, though, of you. Uh, what was your experience on the review process and whether you got any useful feedback during that process that you felt maybe improved your paper during the publication process? And uh, Jessica, let's start with you. For sure. Um, I thought the review process uh, was very useful, and I, I know that our revised paper was definitely stronger um, based on the very constructive and helpful comments of the reviewers. Um, they were very thoughtful and thorough, and uh, I think both myself and my student really benefited from that kind of uh, dialogue, I guess you could, you could call it. Okay. Um, Hortens, I, I actually know your paper very well because I used to do work in the area of biomimetics, and so I, in fact, was a reviewer for your paper. You may not know this. Uh, what was your experience on, on whether the review process was constructive, now that I've told you I was a reviewer? <laughs> <laughs> no, the review process was quite helpful, and um, so I, the paper I wrote was a review paper, where I was trying to not only have an overview of what has been done, but also to kind of pinpoint which are the areas that could be improved and where future research uh, could be useful. And having the, um, the opinion of the reviewer, I think was quite uh, strong and quite useful to further improve the paper as well. Yeah. Okay. And Ben, what, what, what are your thoughts about the review process and whether your paper was improved during, as a result of that review? Well, first of all, let me point out that I really appreciated that this was a speedy review in my case. And also, I like a lot that the reviewers made it from a different perspective uh, than, than they usually do. So in that case, we pointed out uh, what, as an early what would be my interest to do as an early scholar and how I would I could improve um, the way I presented my results. Very so that's good. very positive from my side. Oh, very good. I, I know, uh, I can remember when I published my first papers, the first reviews I got back were, well, <laughs> they didn't agree 100% with me, I, <laughs> but I, I found always that it was useful uh, early in my career to learn how to write a paper better and how to focus it so that people understood the message. And I uh, I hope you all had that experience. I should say that there are actually 16 papers published in this particular issue. Uh, mm -hmm. And while we have only three of you, I'm hopeful that the rest of the authors agree with your assessment of uh, the value of publishing in this particular issue. Um, any final comments here? Of, that you might want to relay to uh, our future authors. I should tell you that uh, you can write review articles, as Hortense did. Uh, and of course, original research articles are, are just as welcome. Uh, but sometimes uh, review articles can be quite useful way to uh, focus your attention on an area that you would like to explore, particularly uh, as you move into your career and can be fodder for uh, proposals. I've heard many times in the past that, in fact, the, the, the paper turned out to be a very useful way uh, to focus on a topic that allowed for a very useful proposal that resulted in, in actually funding. Uh, so just a final, some final comments about uh, our potential authors for the future. Uh, and uh, Jessica, I'll start with you again. So I would just say that this is a fantastic opportunity. And if you're going to write a paper, it's not that much of a difference here. It's just a matter of watching the deadlines and making sure that you're selecting a topic that's appropriate for the journal. But um, I think it's a really, really exceptional opportunity that 
it's as long as you're aware of, should definitely take advantage of early in your career. And Hortense? Yeah, I would add that uh, lots of uh, researchers in material science, uh, like in the broad community of material science, are usually reading uh, these papers uh, from this journal because they are very uh, strongly associated with the material research society. And therefore, it's uh, also very great that you're not publishing only to a specific community like chemists or um, mechanical engineers, but like a broad range. And this is also a very, a very interesting and useful opportunity. And Benoit, uh, final comments? So, so regarding your comments about uh, review papers, um, I fully agree with you that this gives one, this gives one uh, larger visibility. However, as an early scholar, it might be difficult at this stage to get that far. So as far as I'm concerned, I have a backlog of experimental results to publish uh, that I have to give higher priority. But I can, could certainly, uh, I could certainly envision to, to, to publish a review paper in the two or three years, I guess. Yeah, thank Good you luck. for that comment, Merle, Dr. Merle. Uh, it's actually, uh, Right, writing a review article early in your career is actually a, a very interesting uh, challenge. Uh, first of all, you have to actually know how to write a review article. It's a, a critical assessment of the literature. Uh, but I always feel that particularly young people, because they have finished their PhD only a few years ago, they are actually an expert in a very specific area. Uh, and if they think about it, uh, they can actually take what they've been working on and the assessments they've done on the literature just to do their own research. And they're well positioned actually to write a review. I should add, by the way, that if you do want to write a review article, uh, we certainly would welcome it. Uh, but the review article topic has to be approved by myself. And so there's a process that you have to apply. Uh, you will find that process on the JMR website. Uh, about applying to write a review article because sometimes people would like to write a review article in an area that really is not appropriate for the journal of materials research. Uh, so with that, I think uh, we've I've enjoyed very much talking with the three of you. I've only knew one of you. No, actually, I know two. Both, excuse me. Oh. I actually have met two of you uh, before. Uh, only the American person I haven't met met yet, Jessica. I haven't met you before. Uh, but I'm happy to do so today. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you at future MRS meetings and looking forward to receiving some more papers from you. And also, uh, of course, asking you to help us with the review process as we go forward. Uh, so finally, uh, the deadline for papers for this particular issue are June 1, 2019. Uh, I look forward to receiving papers from you and uh, Hortense, Jessica, and Benoit, thank you very much for taking time for your schedules today. Uh, happy holidays to you all. Uh, I hope you have some time to take a break and to rest before you get back to it in 2019. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, too.